beginning to really hate my wife. My wife loves to hike. Doesn't matter the weather, doesn't matter the time. Night hikes, winter hikes, scorching hot hikes. She even has names for different kinds of hikes. She'll do plain headlamp hikes, but other times at night, she'd be more creative and crack some glow sticks for a glowy, as she'll call it. I've seen her wrap a bandage around a stick, soak it in lamp oil and go on a torch hike. She had ideas for hikes like Bubba did for shrimp. It was impressive. So, it was no surprise to family and friends that even when she was nearly eight months pregnant, we were still hiking. She planned a trip for the two of us to hike in the northern Cascade Mountains, near the Canadian border. We joked that it was our first family hike. We knew we were having a girl and we had already named her. She was Emma, our girl. I didn't even bother asking if Lucy thought the height might be too strenuous. When Lucy had made up her mind to hike, that was that. There was no stopping her. I packed my ultralight bag a bit heavier in case we ended up in trouble and we set out for a seven-day trip. The first six of those days were uneventful. It was early September. The sun shined and the nights were warm, but towards our last two days the rain began to fall, and it never stopped. Sheets of rain fell so hard it was like standing in the shower. At times it was hard to even see. It was windless rain without a breeze. No gales, just the goddamn downpour. Day and night it went on. My socks were wet. My crotch was wet. My underwear bunched up and hid in my butt crack and retreated no matter how many times I yanked them out. If you've been camping in the rain, oh you know, it was hell. But tell that to Lucy. She had a big old beaming smile that never left her face. So you see, I didn't even have anybody to complain with. I was getting angry. I was sick of powdered mashed potatoes and peanut butter. I wanted a cheeseburger and I wanted someone who could bitch with me. I was an asshole to Lucy, I'll admit it. I was short, snappy and envious that she could always look on the bright side of life. Things got worse when we were just four miles to the car. When we took a break to eat a granola bar, I noticed a carving on a tree just off the trail. I squinted through the rain and went closer. It was a pentagram. It was fresh, the wood it exposed still blonde and pungent. What's that? asked Lucy. The doing of some kids. Is that a pentagram? We're not too far from the highway now. You get all kinds of non-hiker types this close to civilization. Truth be told, I was nervous and wanted to get home. I started down the trail and spoke over my shoulder. Come on, let's keep going. This is where we encountered trouble. It had rained so much, a little landslide had washed away the trail. The mountainside the trail clung to was a river of mud and blocked with fallen fir trees. I had an emergency sat phone on me. I took it out ready to call. I hated to be a burden to the rangers, but I had a pregnant wife and an act of God had taken out the trail. They'd probably be angry if I didn't beacon for help. This situation could get bad and expend a lot more resources if we weren't smart. But apparently we were idiots. Lucy had pride, too much for her own good. And when she saw me pull out the sat phone, she immediately swung her hand towards it. Put that away! She batted the phone, and it went to tumbling down the mountainside, skipping across stones and sliding under the brush. I was silent with anger. The rain was too loud to hear where it might have landed. Sorry, said Lucy finally. Didn't mean to. I began unshouldering my pack with a sigh. Where are you going? asked Lucy. To get the sat phone. We don't need that stupid thing. Let's just cross this mess and get home. I scoffed and started my descent into the bramble. It's a $400 phone, Luce. Wait here. Little did I know it was the last I'd hear from Lucy that trip. It took me two hours to find the sat phone. The damn thing tumbled twice as far as I even thought possible. It was like somebody moved it. 
When I got back to where I'd left Lucy, I spun around in a panic circle. Lucy! I yelled. Lucy! I didn't waste time to investigate on my own. I immediately called the ranger station for help. The only trace of her were some boot prints that went through the landslide, but those eventually faded out. I stayed out with the rescuers as night fell fast. We called her name, dispatched helicopters with thermal cameras to pick up her heat signature, but there was nothing. She'd vanished. I thought for sure we'd find her fast. There was a 30-person rescue team and three helicopters, but she just didn't show up. The rain hindered our search and after two exhausting weeks, where every day was met with the same disappointment, the search was called off. We didn't live close to where Lucy went missing. We were about a four-hour drive away. That day I had to drive home was the hardest of my life. I felt like I had given up on her, given up on my unborn child. I cried the whole way back. I was told it was three more weeks before she was found, but I had long lost my sense of time. My job was generous to give me a month paid time off for my bereavement, and I spent my checks on liquor and beer for the mornings when I was hungover. I even missed the first phone call from Lucy's sister. I got the news as a goddamn text. They found her. I frowned down at my phone and called her back. It was true. They found Lucy, and not her rotting corpse. She was alive and even well. Other than dehydration and a twisted ankle, apparently she grew impatient with my searching and said screw it. She went on without me and at some point took a hard fall. When she stood up, her bearings were wrong and she hiked determinedly to the southwest when she should have been heading northwest. I was mad at the story. I'd almost assumed she'd been kidnapped by Satanists. I didn't think Lucy would just take off on me like that. But still, I was grateful she'd been found. I wanted to drive back to the mountains to see her. They were holding her at a local hospital. Lucy's family had already left to see her. I guess it was a good thing I was too drunk to drive. Because a couple of hours later, I got a call saying Lucy had left the hospital. Escaped is the word they used. I was concerned but decided to give the situation some time. I still wasn't sober enough to be much help to anyone. A couple of hours later, the security light in the backyard turned on. I heard footsteps on the back stairs. I froze as I heard a timid knock on the back door. I ran to open it and flung it open. There was Lucy, her face pale, cold, and riddled with ruby scabs from scrapes. I wrapped my arms around her and began to cry. Hey, hey! Lucy patted my back and played it off cool just like she was liable to. I'm okay. She pushed into me so we were inside and shut the door behind us. Why did you leave the hospital? Are you both? I looked at her belly. To my relief, she was as pregnant as ever. Is the baby okay? I didn't let them check. It's why I left the hospital. What? Why not? This child is going to be stillborn, okay? Her name's Emma, remember? And why are you saying that? I choked on my words as my voice became thick with tears. I put my hand on Lucy's stomach. Did she stop kicking? Yeah, she stopped kicking. My shoulders sank. I plopped on the couch. Um, I'm happy you're okay, but I need a minute. Ah! Lucy flung her hands to her stomach in pain and I sprang back up. Are you okay? The baby could still be coming. You'll still give birth. No! Lucy shook her head violently. That's not what this is. She stepped around me quickly to the bathroom and dropped to her knees in front of the toilet. I'm sick. As soon as she said it, a torrent of black vomit burst from her mouth. I rushed to her and held her hair and patted her back while she heaved. Before I even saw her vomit, I noticed the smell of wet earth filled the bathroom. Mud. I leaned over her shoulder and looked into the toilet bowl. I wrinkled my face in disgust. I was expecting to see hospital food she couldn't hold down. 
but instead the toilet was full of black dirt. I gagged as I saw a worm, shining pink in the puke. What the fuck, Lucy? She reached up, flushed the toilet and kept vomiting. It was five full minutes before she stopped gagging. I backed up and she stood, washed her hands and rinsed out her mouth. I had to look pregnant. Her words were lost on me until she turned around and I saw that after all her vomiting, her stomach had flattened considerably. She still had a bit of a bump, but she looked less pregnant when we first set out on our hike. No one could know. You understand? I didn't understand, and I stared back at Lucy in frightening silence. The hospital. They'd tell the news people and everyone would know. It was the stress. The stress and our little girl came early. And you can't understand. You can't begin to understand. I was in the woods for weeks with nothing to eat. She looked at me and the blood left my face. It's still yet to return. Don't judge me, Lucy snapped. You have no idea what it's like to be starving.